be making basics. What's good YouTube, Beat Making Basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe and also give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Without further ado, let's jump in today's video. So what we're gonna be covering today is how to make your own 808 sounds in Logic Pro 10, all right? Let's jump in. Now the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and create a software instrument track and under instrument, you're gonna scroll down here to drum synth, okay? Do stereo, then push create, and now your drum synth is gonna come up. You're gonna go ahead and click there. Now what this drum synth is gonna do, this is actually like a little VST that uh, Logic has included in the software, and basically you can create anything um, from kicks to snares, percussion, hats, cymbals, whatever. Um, un under the kick, as soon as you hit it, 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 you could hear some of the sub and 808 vibes. And we just need to basically um, change some of the knobs here and the settings here, and you'll get a real smooth sound in 808. So let's just listen to it. So they're calling that a kick, but that's pretty much like an 808. So first thing I would actually do here is um, go ahead and turn off key tracking. Reason why I want to turn off key tracking because you're going to basically get the sound in its rawest form. It's not going to be linked to the piano. So like literally anywhere I play on the piano, it's going to still play that same toned note. Don't worry because actually we're going to just take this tone after we finish it, like finish manipulating it and everything and turn it into a wave file. So you're not going to worry about that. But uh, anyway, so now this is the sound without key tracking on. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and break down each one of these knobs here, okay? First knob I want to talk about is Decay. Now, the Decay knob, if you turn it to the right, it's going to make the sound elongated, or basically, the, this, the sound is going to run off for a long time. Um, if you turn the Decay down, it's going to basically create a shorter sounding 808. So, let's listen to that. And you can see how you can easily make a kick out of this just by turning the, the, the uh, decay completely off. I would say anywhere like over 50, you should probably be good as far as a, a good sound in 808. Um, next thing we could talk about is the tone. So just moving this up, it will give it a different sound based on how, you know, how this sounds. Same thing with the sweep. It can kind of take some of that attack out of there, some of that punch out of it, and it makes it sound a little more smooth. Like if you take the sweep down some. So if you want to kick, you turn that sweep all the way up, the, the, the uh, decay all the way down. But we're gonna work with this. It's about right at 30. And then we got the shape knob. And that shape knob, it kind of has more of a glide effect to it. So I kind of recommend turning that down some when you're making the 808. And then one of my most favorite knobs on here is going to be the saturation. It's basically adding a little bit of a distortion. And let's just kind of just play around with that. And that's when it starts getting a little more interesting. You can also um, affect the pitch. All right, and you just keep on messing around with these knobs until you find the 808 that sounds the best to you. All right, so after you have your 808, um, what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and play it within the workspace or actually record it within the workspace window. So we'll go ahead and do that. All 
All right, bet. So now that we have that there, we'll quantize it. Make sure that it's like all the way at the very beginning. So I'm just going to click on the grid, Command A to highlight it, and voila, it's quantized. All right, so now we have this sound right here. It's a dope 808. Now, what you could do to take this a step further is go ahead and start adding effects to this. Now, you're not going to necessarily for an 808 add like, you know, your flangers or your phasers and stuff like that. But you can go come in here and EQ this so you can make it sound even more muddy. Take out some of the highs. Shape it just a little bit over here on the low end. Just to give it a little bit more of a punch, a little bit more of a, you know, a vibe on that. You could come over here and add some more uh, compression if you wanted to, to give it a little bit of a punch. And then you could also put a little more um, distortion on it if you wanted to even. So I can come over here, grab one of these distortions and play around with the knobs on that. All right, so we keep on messing around with this until you really got a good 808 that you want to use. And let's just say that we added all the plugins and different things on there that we want to use. Now the next step would be to take this and right click this sound. When you right click this, what it's going to do is give you the option to bounce it in place. And what that's going to do now is turn this into an audio file. So we can just say 808. Um, this for distorted sub you know we could just name it whatever click on ok and now i have this 808 right here and then what i would do just to make sure everything is um, lined up and not you know messing up or anything like that as far as the clipping on anything is i would um fade this out so you can push t and then scroll down to fade tool. So if you even if you just push T and then A, you'll go to fade tool. And you can come to the end of this and make sure that it's not gonna, you know, leave a pop after this sound goes. So check this out. Perfect. So now that we have that, what we could do now is export this. Okay, I just right clicked and then went down here to export and we're going to export this as an audio file. It's going to ask where you want to put it. I always put it on the desktop and you could enter anything right here if you want to. Um, overload protection, you could put that on there or not. Doesn't matter, but uh, you can put overload protection just so it's not super clipping and then export it. Voila, now we have this particular 808 that I can now come over here, create a, another software instrument track, go down to quick sampler, stereo, create. And now if I wanna input that, that uh, sample I just created, I can now like click right here and this is gonna pull up different folders I can search on my computer for. So we'll go on a desktop and lo and behold, we got this 808 disc sub. So we're going to bring him in here and now I'm going to take, turn this musical typing back on just so you can see the screen here. But now I can click over here on this little flex tool, follow tempo, make sure I'm in classic mode and that there's no loop here you could even put another little fade right there 
and now I can go ahead and start playing. And it's a lot of a lot of dope things that you could do at this point. You know what I'm saying? You could also do one shot mode. And what one shot mode is gonna do is basically if you tap the note, it's gonna play the sample all the way through. So I could tap C up here, C4. One in, in, in one shot mode, it'll play it all the way through. But I usually like leave it in classic mode. That way, as long as I hold it down, that's how long the sample is gonna sound. Now, if I want to, I can take it a step further and do some more manipulation of this uh, 808 right here within the quick sampler. So I could put a filter on it. mess around with it there after this then I can come over here to the factory default area where you see that and I can go over here where it says save as and now I can have a copy of this 808 right in my quick sampler so I could say 808 this sub save it now anytime where I want to make beats and I want to use my custom 808 I could come over here to the quick sampler, create a software instrument track, come over to the quick sampler, push create, and then click on the quick sampler. And then right where you see factory default at the top, I can scroll down to my 808 I create, I created. And I call it 808 disc sub. Boom, and now I have my 808 at my fingertips whenever I want to access it. Okay, so yo, that's the video of the day. Appreciate you all watching. Appreciate you all subscribing and appreciate all the thumbs up on the video. Just so you know, I am also offering a lot of cool things on my website. So make sure you go to beatmakingbasics.com to check out all the cool things I'm offering. I'm doing one-on-ones where you can book Zoom calls. I got courses that I'm creating and dropping there sound kits i'm also going to be start doing live videos and some super cool stuff just to help you understand things in logic pro 10 and garage band and how to make beats so y'all appreciate you go ahead and subscribe and all that fun stuff we're out